What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malt Activist, and we are back again with another list. And this list is me counting down my top 10 smokiest whiskeys of all time. I realized very early on in my career as a whiskey drinker that smoke is where it's at. And then, you know, I, uh, I got introduced to Isla whiskeys and then I fell in love and I was like, this is it. And I, and I couldn't help myself and there, was, there wasn't enough smoke, there wasn't enough peat to satisfy my craving for this kind of whiskeys. And you can ask many, many a seasoned whiskey drinker that ultimately what will happen is you will, you will start gravitating towards these big, big robust flavors and smoky whiskeys that really, really challenge your palate. You know, and for me, it was the higher the strength, the better, the smokier, the better, the peatier, the better. And I kept looking for all those extremes. And ultimately, I realized that this is what I am. I am an Islophile or a, or a, or a pedophile. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, my God. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean pedophile. I meant Pete the file. Oh wow. Oh my god. Okay, I have two options now. <laughs> Either to cut this, cut to cut this from the video or keep it. I haven't decided <laughs> what I'm going to do. Wow, I can't believe I said that on camera. What an idiot. <laughs> what an absolute idiot. Okay. Uh, uh, this might be the best intro ever. Who knows? Okay. Damn. I don't know if I can keep a straight face after this. Uh, getting back to all seriousness of whiskey, whiskey drinking. Okay. That was... That was hilarious. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. <laughs> okay, so let's let's get let's get serious. Enough, ah, enough. So yes, I realized that I am uh, I am absolutely in love with all that is smoky and peaty that comes out of Isla, and uh, and and a lot of my top ten whiskeys of all time must include at least I think fifty percent um, smoky and peaty whiskeys. Um, so so yeah, there you have it. And you know, no surprise, uh, I am I am an Ardbeg fanboy. I'm a Lefroig fanboy. I love Lagavulin. I think everything that comes out of Kilhoman is very very good. Uh, Kalila is one of my favorite distilleries ever. Uh, so yeah, you can see where my tendencies lie uh, in terms of my flavor profile. So, you know, big smoke, big whiskeys, big strength, you know, uh, so that's what I like. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list my top 10, uh, I think top 10, ex uh, top 10 distilleries more than anything else, uh, because, you know, uh, individual expressions are very difficult to identify. You know, sometimes they're not available, sometimes they're whatever, they're discontinued or whatever it is. So, you know, I'll try and give you like a few uh, expressions from each distillery. You know, uh, find whichever one you can, make up your own mind and, uh, but more importantly, enjoy yourself and drink responsibly. So the first distillery, of course, for me is Artbag, and uh, no two ways about it. I am in love with everything. Well, I know I'm in love with everything that they do, but it's purely for emotional reasons more than anything else. So when they come out with a stinker, it really upsets me on an emotional level uh, and I don't know how to handle myself. And I have a few friends who are like that. But, you know, having said that, we love the people at the distillery, you know, we go there every year during the festival and we meet them and they're so amazing and so nice and so welcoming, so hospitable that, you know, you can't help but fall in love with them, with the distillery, with, with the place and ultimately with the spirit itself. However, the whiskeys that I'm going to show you are absolute top notch. Let's start with the standard Artbeg 10. This is a stunning, stellar whiskey. 
Uh, it comes in at about 50% ABV, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 50 to 46%. I'm not sure 100%, but I think maybe 50%. Uh, and it is the part of the core range. It's available everywhere. It's quite cheap. And it is one of the most flavorful smoky whiskeys that you'll uh, ever have. And that is a guarantee. You know, it has that nice citrus smoke uh, and uh, pineapple, which is the uh, industry uh, characteristic. Uh, and lots of grist and char and, 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 and black and white peppers and, and a hint of saltiness. Uh, but, you know, rounded off with a vanilla caramel sweetness, which oh, is, is really my go-to flavor profile. And Artbeck 10 delivers on that beautifully. If you're looking for something a little more meaty and punchy, let me tell you about the Oogadal. The Oogadal is a highly sherried, uh, high strength whiskey, 54.2% ABV. Uh, it's matured uh, in, um, I think, very, very active sherry casks. They don't really mention which ones, but you know, active sherry casks, I'm gonna guess Oloroso. And that mixture of uh, smoke, peat, and sherry at such a high strength, mm, very good. However, I will uh, be honest and say, newer releases of the Ugadal aren't nearly as good as the earlier ones. And I think it was 2005 or six when they released the first one. And those are absolute stunners. Uh, I don't know why, I think maybe there were older whiskeys involved back uh, back in the day. Uh, but, uh, you know, Ugadal still packs a punch, uh, even though uh, not as good as previous years. What else? Another thing from Artbeg uh, is the, ooh, the alligator. Sadly, not available anymore. However, this was the whiskey that kind of uh, made me realize how, you know, uh, how extreme you can take a whiskey. And this was the charring level on their, on their first fill bourbon casks, uh, which looked like the uh, skin of an alligator. They had charred it so much. And that's what it was called, the alligator. And that really brought out massive flavors from the cask into the liquid. And they released that in my opinion, probably could be the best art bag ever made. I'll, I'll stand by that comment for now. Um, yeah, I'll stand by that comment. Could be my favorite art bag. Um, the other, another one that you might want to get your hands on from art bag is the Supernova. Of course, I am showing you the first ever Supernova that came out. This came out in 2009. This is called a Stellar release. And at that time was supposed to be the peatiest art bag ever. Uh, since then, they've come out with a 2010 and a 14 and a 15 and a 19. So there's five Supernovas so far. Um, I think the, uh, the later ones are far more easily available versus the older ones. Uh, very different flavor profile, but damn fine in my opinion. Very smoky, very, very flavorful. So if you're looking for a smoky whiskey uh, to start off your, um, I don't know, uh, smoky whiskey career, then Artbeg is definitely, definitely uh, a must have. Our second whiskey on the map, of course, the fantastic Lefroig. And I have here with me this amazing, cost strength 10 year old this if you were quick enough is the first ever cost strength Lefroig released as part of the 10 year old cost strength series and this is released in february 2009 that's right check it out isn't that amazing and to me best value for money whiskey out there yes it has doubled in price in the last five years but at 60 70 80 pounds Still not a bad buy, um, given what it uh, packs in terms of ABV, in terms of flavors. And uh, so this is the this is the 10 year old uh, matured in first fill bourbon casks and bottled at cost strength. They're up to batch 13 now. So definitely one of my favorite smoky whiskeys out there. Uh, Lefroig by a huge mile, uh, one of the best distilleries out there. And, and I mean, not just the smoky ones on Isla, but across all of Scotland, uh, massive, massive uh, producer of uh, spirit. And to, you know, to be able to keep up that quality of spirit over such large volumes just shows how competent and amazing uh, John Campbell and the rest of the team is over at Lefroig. Uh, so yes, so if you can get your hands on the Lefroig cost strength uh, series, the 10 the year old, 
but of course they, they also have the regular 10 year old, they have the quarter cask and they're both uh, excellent whiskies. Uh, but my pick from Lefroig would be the 10 year old Kostrek series. Moving down the road in uh, Port Allen from Ardbeck to Lefroig and finally to Lagavulin. I have here with me, no, not the 16, which by the way is an amazing dram and you should definitely try it. I have here with me the 12 year old also served at cost strength. Now, of course, the 16 year old is, um, is normal fare. Uh, it's part of the core range and you can go and buy it anywhere. And I think fantastic whiskey, I love it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if you really, really want to uh, see and experience the distillery character at, at, uh, at high strength, then the 12 year old cost strength is what you want to get your hands on. I have this one from 2011 and this is bottled at a lovely 57.5% ABV. Uh, super, super whiskey, really packs the punch. Um, again, you know, uh, uh, hard to find in my, uh, uh, in my experience, uh, but if you can get your hands on them for sure, this is a good one to have if you want to experience something super smoky uh, as well as extremely flavorful at that high strength. Uh, like I said, the Lagavulin 16, quite easily available and a definite, definite uh, smoky whiskey to try if you've not tried one. Our next whiskey is a bit of an anomaly. It is from the Bruchladig Distillery. This is the PC series or the Port Charlotte. I have here with me the eight-year-old and oh, I have this really lovely uh, PC 11 as well, sorry, PC 8 and PC 11. These whiskies are created at the Brooklyn Distillery under the Port Charlotte banner uh, and they're one of the super, super highly peated, super smoky whiskies to come out of Brooklyn. Brooklyn, as you know, does not peat their Brooklyn range of whiskies, so they're a peat free zone as far as do those whiskies are concerned, as far as that spirit is concerned. But for Port Charlotte or the PC series, they really, really amped up the smoke and the peat and they serve it at very high strengths. So if you can get your hands on that, oh, that is an experience to have. You know, lots of bacon and kipper and, and salted caramel uh, and at a high strength, full of smoke. The PC series is one of my favorite. I think the PC6 is probably my favorite of the series, even though it's super young. Uh, but um, if you can get your hands on any one of the PCs, uh, for sure uh, do that. It is definitely a fantastic experience in uh, trying a smoky whiskey. Speaking of absolute monsters, the Octomore. This is the brainchild of Sir Jim McEwen, ex-master distiller of Brookladdock, who said, I am going to create the greatest and the most peatiest and the most smokiest of all whiskies of all time. And then he came up with the Octomore. And for example, this particular one, it has a PPM level of 167. I don't know if you can see that. It's right there. Woo! There you go. A PPM level of 167. Just to give you an idea, a regular art bag is uh, is smoked at 40 ppm. This is four times, more than four times as smoky as a normal art bag. So you can imagine what you can expect. However, I've tried this. And at cost strength, it is a symphony of sweet, beautiful flavors mixed with this smoky, salty character profile, which is an experience unlike any other. And Mr. Jim McEwen, he's hit it massively out of the park. If you can get your hands on an Octomore, please do. You will not be disappointed. In fact, there's a cult uh, behind this uh, expression and people go to great lengths to find and, and, uh, and collect these different whiskeys. I've been lucky enough to have a few in my, in my closet and uh, Octomore is literally in one of my top five uh, whiskeys of all time, forget smoky. So yes, find it, buy it, drink it. One of my other favorite distilleries is Kilhoman, and from there, I really, really recommend the Kilhoman 
Macherbe. This is, oh, this is a fantastic little dram, bottled at 46%, matured in first filled bourbon, uh, and it has, I think, pro it is probably the quintessential distillery uh, character, you know, and it reminds me of young art bag, you know, young, very good art bag, uh, which I think is a compliment, why not? Uh, Kilhoman, they've carved out a niche for themselves and, you know, they're going places and it's going to be the biggest, one of the biggest names uh, in Scotch whiskey industry in the coming years, if it's not already. The brainchild of Anthony Wills, these guys, they produce some of the tastiest whiskies out there. Very smoky, very, very, very flavorful. And uh, if you go to Isla every year, you, you'll be able to buy their distillery uh, exclusive uh, for the Isla Festival and it is normally a single cask. Uh, that is bottled at cost strength. And there's something magical about Kilhoman cost strengths, uh, which you should definitely get your hands on. Uh, but I think if you are just getting into whiskey and just getting to smoky whiskeys, then this lovely Macher Bay is the way to go, in my opinion. There's also the Loch Gorm, which is, uh, which is slightly sherried, also extremely nice, very flavorful. Again, I think I'm seeing flavorful all the time, a lot. So I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm going to say um, lip smacking. Yes, lip smacking whiskeys from Kiloman, especially at cost strength. Those are lovely. If not, get your hands on the Macher Bay. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's part of the core range and quite easily available. So definitely do that. All right, our next whiskey on the list is Talisker. What I'm holding up is the 57 North, and which in my opinion is probably the best whiskey to come out of Talisker. It's called 57 North because that's exactly where the distillery is. 57 North uh, uh, Longitude, not Latitude, Latitude's like that, yes. 57 North Longitude, uh, that's where the uh, distillery is located on the Isle of Skye. And to commemorate that, they've uh, released this lovely bottle and uh, it's bottled, as you can see, at 57%. Of course, otherwise that would be a marketing gimmick missed if they hadn't done that. Um, gimmicks aside, this is one of the most fantastic whiskeys uh, to come out of Talisker uh, and uh, just generally overall. A beautiful dram. I love it because again, you know, it hits all the sweet spots for me. It's high strength. It's first filled bourbon. Uh, even though it's a non-age statement, I get it. Uh, but you know, super, super flip. Ah, sorry, not flavorful. Lip smacking, extremely lip smacking whiskey, in my opinion. Um, of course, you have the standard uh, Talisker 10 as well that you can get your hands on, uh, which also is one of the quintessential whiskeys to have in your bar, uh, whether you like smoky whiskeys or not. And believe me, that whiskey is so tasty that you will fall in love with it. And so, if you want to amp up your feelings and your emotions uh, from the 10 year old, then you go up to this 57 North that I just shared with you, which is a super dram. So yes, please, please find it, buy it and drink it. Now this whiskey on my list might be slightly controversial because it's not known for its uh, smokiness, but there is, uh, it's mildly peated and there's a lovely hint of smoke to it as well. And I think my list would have been incomplete without this particular spring bank and this is the 12 year old cost strike as you can see oh man beautiful earthy flavors and that delectable smoke in the background i'm i'm a huge fan of spring bank and Campbelltown whiskeys in general uh but uh, uh this particular one has to be on the li uh, list even though it's not overly 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 smoky uh, it it has uh characteristics of you know smokiness uh, and it's uh, quite uh, decently peated uh, you know when i say mildly peated it doesn't mean that it's like hardly any peat uh, but it's mildly peated with this lovely bit of smoke to it and if you can get your hands on the cost strength versions of the 10 year old and the 12 year old they are absolutely lovely to drink and for sure you have to get your hands on them and yes yes good next one okay with this one i'm cheating because technically it's the same distillery and the same spirit i'm talking about long row this particular one is a 14 year old matured in burgundy wood and it is oh, smashing it just makes me just 
salivate at the mouth uh, this was distilled in 1997 and bottled in 2011 so a very very old bottle and such tasty spirit i can't tell you for those of you who don't know this is also made at springbank distillery uh, it's made with peated barley and it is uh, heavily uh, heavily peated compared to springbank uh, and hazelburn which is another whiskey that they do uh, but this one oh that texture that oiliness that salted caramel uh those uh, those uh, those red fruits mixed in with the smoke and the peat and the earthiness oh long row is still one of my absolute favorite whiskies uh, and uh, sad that they're not able to do that many um that many eight statements these days but you know if you can find yourself an eight statement bottle like the long row cv which was a 14 year old uh the long row 18 is lovely uh, this long row 14 burgundy wood is absolutely smashing uh if you can get your hands on those then fantastic if not get your hands on some long row you know if you haven't tried them you'll be pleasantly surprised and our final whiskey for this video is this absolutely stunning kalela 22 years old this oh, i had this at the distillery when I went there for the festival in 2019. And I will be honest, before that I was, while I was a fan of Kalila as a distillery, um, it didn't move me emotionally. And, it's, and in fact, when you go and see the distillery, it's, it's very big, very industrial, and there's really no romance around it, but the spirit, especially this 22 year old uh, cast strength bottle that uh, they released for the festival in 2019, it changed my life and I absolutely fell head over heels in love with everything that Kalila did and I started to take them a little more seriously. You know, I just I used to just think, oh, it's a it's a single malt that's going to go into the Johnny Walker blend and that's it. But then I started finding these independent bottles, um, the cast strength bottles from um, uh, from these independent uh, independent bottlers, uh, uh, the cast strength series, the signatory cast strength series, uh, then the Gordon and McPhail uh, cast strength Kalilas that are absolutely stunning and you definitely have to get your hands on them if you can otherwise you know uh, even your standard 12 year old Kalilas uh, that are part of the core range are absolutely amazing so if you want to add some smoky character to your bar then 100% make sure that there's a Kalila in amongst everything else so there you have it in no particular order 10 of my favorite smokiest whiskeys in the whole world. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm the Malta Activist. Until next time. Peace.